Hello everyone watching this video. Um, some people on YouTube were asking uh, questions specifically about the Oculus Rift with uh, driving simulators and uh, one of the things I really wanted to know was um, if you can pick up subtle car movements or how controllable the car is whilst using the Rift, if it's disorientating. So I know there's, there's other people who have made videos using the Rift but hopefully in this video I can go over key aspects of, of car control and um, aspects of the, the Rift's utility in, uh, in terms of what it can add to um, to a driving simulator outside of obviously it just being a really nice VR solution. I mean obviously you can look around and get all the wonders of VR and it is, it is pretty striking the first time you put the Rift on despite the really low resolution just a sense of uh, placement within a virtual environment is, is really um, really nice and uh, really different from just using a normal screen so you have to you have to get a Rift to try regardless of if you're going to use it in the long run let's turn the sound up let's turn the volume up on the TV oh. this is how you punch a hole in your screen let's see volume, wrong way volume up I should really put my headphones on but picking it up on. Okay, so pick the uh, Spec Racer 4 because it's, cause it's an open car you can um, you can more clearly see around you. Our racing, uh, I think it looks like they've updated the uh, Oculus Rift integration a bit more and they've um, improved the FOV a bit. So in terms of actual car control the Rift surprisingly it allows you you can pick up subtle car movements and balance the car through corners, which I think was one of the one of the things that I was sceptical about was with the rift, would you be able to actually detect what the car is doing and balance it? So I don't know if, if if you've used track IR, those of you familiar with it, it can be really disorientating. But the rift seems to uh, probably because of the large, relatively large field of view and um, the nature of how it's how it's wrapped around. But it looks kind of when you're actually using it, it's as if you're wearing like a gas mask in the real world with very low resolution. Obviously, they're probably going to improve that with the later versions. But it's not disorientating. You can control the car. You can even look to the side and still quite accurately place the car, which is something I always find really lacking of normal screens. In the, if even with track IR, if you were to look at the apex and try and hit the corner spot on or move your head around, it'd just be really disorientating. But you, you can do it with the rift. You can actually look into a corner. Whoops! <laughs> it's just really bad driving. You can look into a corner and not have it completely throw you. It's not a hundred percent perfect. I mean, there is a little bit of disorientation, but compared to anything else, it's, it's really spectacular. As I said earlier, the, the, the resolution, I think everyone's really said this in the developer kit. Oh, I've gone into that way too fast. The resolution of the developer kit is a massive issue, and uh, the consumer version, the first consumer version, is probably going to be 1080p, which I don't know if that's going to be enough to really. Uh, add the detail to make it really viable for, for driving simulators. I, I think we might have to get to um, above 1080p to really have something that's a, a practical replacement for three screen setups. But if you're, if you're more just like a casual race or you're, you're just looking for an immersive experience, then the, the 1080p one should be fine and I can see myself playing a lot of uh, picking the, the Rift to play driving simulators even with its some of its issues in, in the resolution and being able to see what they call the screen door effect where you can actually see the, the pixels on the screen it's more enjoyable than using uh, a normal screen so really you, unless you're like an alien sim racer looking to put down a world record lap time 
you're probably going to want to just play with a rift anyway. It's really nice just being able to uh, just glance at the wing mirror, and that's quite a really. It's quite an immersive thing to just be turning your head subtly to. I'm just trying to say, say it's not how you do that, Gordon. Just to like the quick glance to see, oh, is that person passing there? They're passing there. And having way more uh, awareness of where you are in the, in, in the car and what's going on around you. And in terms of, uh, I think a lot of people worried about motion sickness and oh dear <laughs> I definitely think that can be a factor and uh, I think some people might suffer from motion sickness I I've noticed if I play for prolonged times or if I if I look around a lot whilst driving I do get a little bit of a queasy feeling but then I think you, you probably start to accommodate that over time and it's become less of an issue for me as I've used the Rift more. And I think also uh, with the consumer version, they're probably going to reduce things like uh, motion blur, make the head tracking a lot faster or a lot more responsive. So that should reduce the, this feeling of motion sickness. And then finally, you, you do have the option to not look around very much and just keep your head mostly fixed forwards. And. Uh, you still get a really good view of things. The 3D actually with the Rift is amazing. It's, it's probably the best 3D that you can get on any device. Well, it's the best 3D I've ever experienced, despite the resolution. It, it literally feels like you're in something when, when you're sat in the car. It feels like I'm there's I'm enveloped by an object, if you will. It's that I'm actually placed in an object. Whoops, <laughs> it's probably not a good idea, uh, full power down the straight whilst looking at the uh, interior of the car. I'm awful with this car. This what happens when you go from R Factor 2 to iRacing to Netcar Pro, lift the speed, every, every simulator has its own quirky physics that you have to uh, adopt to and get used to, acclimatise yourself to. But yeah, it's for those of you that have reservations in terms of actual car control, the consumer version of the Rift, it shouldn't be an issue and given that the Rift's likely to retail for around about $300, uh, that's about, I think they'll probably sell it for £250-£300 in the UK. Uh, it would be silly not to get one anyway, just just for like for other games as well as driving simulators. I should have really written down a, a concise list of points to go over with the Rift, but this is more of a this is more of a let's play. Whilst talking about some aspects of the handling, I think if you've if you've got button boxes and um, obviously you've got really nice LED dials, then you, you can't see them with the Rift, so. That's something to consider, <laughs> but then it, with the wrist, it, you, with the rift, you're so more placed in the car that the dials on the car, assuming that the resolution's higher on the consumer version or a lot higher, you can see the dials on the car more clearly than I think you can on a, on a normal screen. So maybe you won't feel that you'd have to have the LEDs, or maybe. Maybe it won't be as much of an issue as it is on the um, screens. One really nice thing with the 3D with the Optus Rift is that you can focus on different areas of the screen and it feels quite natural. Like I, at the moment I'm looking straight ahead at the track in front of me and um, it's almost as if the mirrors are out of focus but then if I glance up at the mirror either by turn, turning my head to look at them or just with my eyes then it's as if the track becomes out of focus and I'm focused on the mirror which is something you just you just don't get that with uh, a standard 3D screen or you know 3D cinema it feels really strained but with the Oculus Rift the 3D is really it's not a strain on your eyes it's really quite comfortable to use ok 
Okay, well, I think that's. I think I've gone over some of the points. I've blabbed on a bit. Again, drinking too much tea. Um, just uh, drop a comment if you want, if you've got a specific thing you want me to go over, or would like to see. Just drop me a comment, and uh, I'll, I'll try and cover it in the next video. But thanks for watching. Uh, hope for those of you that had questions, what I've said in this video answers some of them. <laughs> Maybe it hasn't. If I haven't, you you have permission to. Um, throw a brick through my window if you can throw a brick up to the fifth story of a, of a flat you're welcome but thanks for watching and uh, I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the video